Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I apologize for not uh, making a video for so long. Uh, I was uh, out of town for quite a while. I had to return to America uh, last month and I was there for a couple of weeks and uh, pretty much as soon as I got back to Japan I had to go on another trip here so uh, I haven't been home very much and haven't had time to get uh, many other things done. I've managed to uh, get some orders and ship out some cameras but other than that it's been uh, quite a busy time but uh, now that I'm back and I don't have any uh, other plans uh, until sometime later this summer uh, I hope to get back up to full speed making more videos and uh, getting more listings put up at my stores. So, uh, today's video is going to be just what it says in the title, and that is going to be uh, why uh, shoot with a TLR or twin lens reflex camera. So, uh, there are several uh, uh, benefits to these cameras uh, and unique features to these which make them a, a really wonderful tool for photographers. Uh, the first thing is their simple design. As you can see, uh, TLR of course means twin lens reflex cameras, and you can see each of these cameras has two lenses. And the way the camera works is that um, it has one lens for looking through the viewfinder and when you are uh, focusing and composing to take your photograph, you will use the upper lens while the other lens uh, projects the image onto the film. And by keeping these as a separate system, you have uh, uh, pretty much a, a simpler way of taking photos and without the, the, the added complication of something like a flip up mirror and such, which you find on um, of course, more modern SLR cameras and also some uh, old complicated ca cameras like the old Graflexes and uh, there were even some uh, flip up mirror versions of uh, twin lens reflex cameras. Uh, there, there was a lot of experimentation with uh, cameras in the 20th century, but uh, basically the twin lens reflex camera is pretty much a, a very standard design. Uh, I have three types here, and these are the three types which I generally deal with. Uh, the most simple and uh, probably the most reliable is this old Ricoflex style here, which features a coupled viewing and taking lens, and they are connected by these uh, teeth uh, in gears around the focusing wheels. And it's kind of a very simple and easy system to work. Uh, it doesn't require anything built on the inside of the camera and basically this is just a metal box with a couple of gears for the lenses, <clears throat> a place for the film, the reflex mirror, and of course the focusing hood. Now, the simplicity of the twin lens reflex camera is uh, a really big strength to, de to the design. There are a few things which can go wrong. Compared to this very older camera uh, and this more modern design uh, Minolta here. Uh, they are fundamentally the same camera. The focusing system on the Minolta is a little bit different. They move it to the inside which uh, makes it less likely to uh, get things stuck between the teeth and such. Uh, the Minolta has a integrated film winding and shutter charging system with a, a mechanical film type uh, counter whereas the old Ricoflex you kind of just have to look through the window in the back for counting the film. Uh, the Ashika Flex here features another change in design and that is adding these uh, wheels here which you use to adjust the shutter speed and the aperture and you can read the, the readings here on the top. On the other cameras, other designs, you will find uh, the shutter speed readings here and the aperture here on this side and uh, very similar here with this old Minolta. Now, <clears throat> Besides the simplicity of the design and the reliability which a simple design uh, gives you, uh, the next good benefit to this camera is that it shoots in the 6x6 centimeter format, which is uh, considered a medium format. Uh, larger formats use larger amounts of film, and larger amounts of film or larger surfaces of film will capture more information. You'll get more detail, you will get more dynamic range, and you can get in the end much higher resolution photographs than you can with other formats of film or smaller formats, and uh, much better than anything you can get uh, in digital today. And what I really like about these cameras is even the negatives. When you look at the negatives before you've printed them or before you've scanned them, they're quite amazing, the amount of detail which these uh, cameras can capture. Uh, if you scan these at high resolution, you can kind of like zoom into the image for quite a long time and see really small uh, details, the kind of things which are, you, you can't find in 35 millimeter film, which is still very high resolution compared to digital. And uh, of course, much better than most of the digital cameras which are on the market today. 
Uh, one of the good things about 120 roll film is that it's been around for a really long time. Uh, it was a popular uh, medium for photographers before 35mm became available in uh, regular cameras. 35mm uh, film was, of course, originally a motion picture film and was used in uh, motion picture cameras when it was uh, first introduced. And it was Mr. Oscar Barnack, the founder of the Leica company, who adapted its uh, use to uh, uh, cameras. So we have him to thank for the 35mm camera in his old uh, Leica rangefinders, or you know, the first ones weren't rangefinders. But anyway, uh, 120 roll film was around before 35mm film, and a lot of people say that it will continue to be made even if people eventually stop using 35mm film. Uh, the, another good thing about these cameras uh, in certain versions of them is some of them can shoot with more than one format. For example, uh, cameras like the Yashica Rookie can shoot in 6x4, 5 or 6x6 uh, format if it has the mask on the inside. <laughs> and this allows you to give more, get more like a, uh, uh, say, a landscape perspective to your photography and uh, get, allows you to get a few more uh, shots or a couple more shots of roll uh, photos out of a roll of film. And then there are certain cameras, some Yashikas and Ricos and others, which have adapters which allow you to use 35 millimeter film. And uh, there isn't much in the way of a, I guess, uh, a performance improvement over using 35 millimeter film, but what you do have, have what you are able to get is kind of a, an interesting look where you can expose the entire film, including uh, you know the take-up holes and stuff on on the side, and that makes for uh, interesting prints. Uh, and a lot of people uh, like to make these kind of photographs using 35 millimeter film in larger format cameras. Uh, the 120 roll film is still available uh, through just about everywhere. You can find it on Amazon or AliExpress or other retailers. And mainly because it's still used quite a, a bit professionally. Uh, here in Japan, people are still using a lot of uh, medium format cameras, press cameras and things like that. And a lot of the magazines and stuff here are still using uh, film as the basis for their uh, you know, photographs, for uh, the content. And it's quite amazing. It wasn't that long ago that I was uh, I, I came across a magazine uh, shoot of a, uh, a camping store, and I found that they were that the photographers were using well used and battered up Mamiya press cameras using 120 roll film to do this photo shoot. And I was quite surprised to find that you know, even here in uh, you know a hundred more than a hundred years after 120 roll film was being you know I guess put on the market or became popular with the mainstream, that it was still being used by shooting pros working for a normal publication. Uh, the basic operations, I've kind of pointed out uh, the basic things, the twin lens uh, design, uh, the reflex mirror on the inside, and of course uh, these cameras also feature uh, a focusing screen. Uh, this Ricoflex is a rather uh, more primitive camera with a kind of odd system here with these slots around in the top. This is the old Ricoh version of a sports finder. Uh, other cameras like the Ashika here will use a different kind of sports finder. What I mean by sports finder is it has this kind of setup here with the big square on the front and the small square in the back. And if you center the big square with the small square, uh, it gives you a pretty good field of view of what the camera sees when you're focused at infinity. And if you want to use the sports uh, uh, finder, of course you can't focus the camera because the focusing screen is covered. But if you're shooting something like a baseball game or soccer game or something like that, the camera's probably going to be focused at infinity if you're somewhere in the stands. Uh, other features, uh, I mentioned before that uh, th this camera here, the old Ricoh Flex, and certain other ones, some of the old Yashica Flex cameras as well, feature this window on the back which you use for uh, counting uh, the frames. Now this is a very simple feature which uh, uh, a lot of people think is kind of a pain in the butt because it's a little bit difficult to use in low light. But on the other hand, it's an incredibly simple and reliable system. And a mechanical frame counter system uh, like we find here in the Yashica Flex, though it is very convenient and you don't have to look at anything when you're winding the film, you just simply wind uh, from one frame to the next. You know, it, you wind until it stops and then you push the button to wind to the next frame. Uh, the benefits of this are outweighed by the addition of a lot of complexity inside the film counting mechanism. And as these are old cameras, the mechanism can kind of get old and sometimes it doesn't work properly. 
Uh, sometimes when you wind uh, the camera, it won't stop at the next frame. It'll just keep winding through the, the numbers, making it very difficult to, to line up the images. Uh, you can often fix that by uh, removing this knob here. On this button, there are a couple of small holes, and if you use a pair of tweezers or sharp needle nose pliers, you can unscrew this button. Underneath this button is a spring, which you have to make sure doesn't fly off and disappear. And below the spring is a large slotted screw. If you remove that screw, this whole knob pops off, and you can kind of see the lever mechanism which releases the counter, and a few drops of solvent or lighter fluid uh, dripped inside will often free it up, and if you put the camera back together, that will often get the uh, uh, frame counter working again. On a camera like this one here, uh, this is a more reliable system which is used in uh, the Minolta cord or uh, uh, Minolta Flex or whatever variety it is, and uh, it, it tends to it's integrated with the system on the front. That's a little bit more of a complication, but uh, as a more modern design, this camera is actually quite reliable. Uh, I mentioned the focusing systems. Uh, this old Ricoflex uses the, the very primitive uh, gear system on the front. Uh, the Ashika Flex uses the more conventional focusing knob on the side. And cameras like uh, this Minolta and sometimes the Ricoflex cameras, they have focusing levers. In the case of uh, the Minolta, it has a single lever on the bottom. The Ricoflexes have one on either side, which allow you to focus the camera left-handed or right-handed. Uh, the benefits uh, or you know, between each of the cameras, that's more of a, a, a matter of taste. Some people prefer, uh, much prefer the, the, the complete absolute simplicity of the old Ricoflex design. Uh, some people prefer something more in the middle like the Ashika Flex, and of course some people prefer something with, uh, let's mix them around here, uh, of something which has everything integrated together, like in the Minolta Autocord. Uh, I wish I had a Rolly Flex to, to show here. I got rid of my last Rolly Flex a little while ago. Someone was asking me who, who really wanted one. I had an old 3.5 uh, uh, E model with the planar lens, and uh, I ended up parting with that. Uh, and one I had before was my first serious uh, TLR camera for medium format photography. And as soon as I developed my first roll of film from that camera, I was really impressed. And I ended up using that camera for six or seven years before I finally let it go. Uh, one of these days I'll get another one if I ever find one for uh, uh, something of a, a, you know, in good condition for a decent price. But uh, in the meantime, these cameras are pretty much 90% of what a Rolly Flex is for uh, about 90% less cost. So uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, who would like to shoot a TLR camera? Uh, lots of people. I, I was surprised at the man, at the man for these cameras when I first started selling them. Uh, for a long time, I focused mainly on uh, 35 millimeter cameras, rangefinder cameras, and uh, SLR cameras, and I came across a couple of old twin lens reflex cameras, and people seem quite interested in them. And so, uh, over the years, I've uh, kind of increased my stock of these, and I usually have at least uh, five or six different versions available in my stores. So, uh, of course, if you're interested in buying one of these, uh, please check out my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. If you have any questions about twin lens uh, reflex cameras or comments or uh, anything you would like to add, uh, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. Uh, I haven't added any, uh, for obvious reasons, I haven't had uh, time to add videos to my other uh, channel. Uh, so I, I hope to be able to get one of those up sometime next week. I'm getting back on my bike and riding around Tokyo as much as that I can with the time I have and uh, when the weather allows. And I'm hopefully going to be able to make a few of those videos over the next couple of months. Uh, when it comes to camera videos, I hope to have at least uh, another one published uh, on Monday or so. So um, uh, if you want to check them out, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.